the nature of the engine that we built to do all that um, is was called the called Rude R U D E for the Retro Universal Design Engine. Right. And uh, and it was really powerful. And in, in in many respects, it was it's still more powerful than like uh, um, uh, from a design standpoint, from from a scripting standpoint, from an authoring standpoint, than any engine out there. Right. You can connect any object to any object to send any message that you want. So if you understand how the system works as a designer, you can create extraordinarily complex scripting systems to do all sorts of mechanics without having to have an engineer involved at all, right, to create it. So like um, in, in the Metro games, when we had, we had one, one of the games, we had a turret that you blow it up and a space pirate corpse would fly out, right, because it was a little man turret that goes up there. And that was all scripted, right, so that a designer actually took all the parts and made an explosion we would turn off the, the when you destroyed the turret we would turn off the model of the turret and spawn an explosion in that place that uh, a designer had put together he had put together all the debris of a ball in a shape given each debris a randomized vector for the explosion added the particle effects and then took a space pirate turn we had turned on a space pirate ability uh, for ragdoll so he becomes a corpse with no ai you can hold him by any bone in his body and he would hang and wriggle, and we would spawn him and fling him out of the uh, out of the uh, explosion of the debris using the system that we that we had built for um, making objects follow paths. So we would accelerate an invisible box with a space pirate corpse tied to it out of the debris of the explosion, and let the ragdoll take over. We would turn off the box after like you know three tenths of a second at velocity. The, the space pirate model would retain velocity and tumble away from the explosion. Right. And we did all of that with no programmatic, other than to give us the ability to actually hook it all up by creating little objects. We created that all with designers. So it was a real powerful uh, designer's engine. And, and that's why Metroid Prime, that's the series um, is, is so effective at creating a lot of gameplay with a very small production team. For one thing, rude actually stands for retro unified development environment something about the engine that i don't think a lot of people really understand is a pretty stunning amount of engineers actually worked on it for a very long time and i even when i when i got to retro this is before we had real gamecube hardware i think maybe one person had like a very old gamecube prototype this is before the studio got dev units at large and there had already been written a stunning amount of like core code um for games without really games running on them i remember my first uh, assignment i was in the tools and technology team at the time was to write a renderer for the football games stadiums so like some people had built stadium models and i there had not been a renderer so i remember i i like wrote something to chop up the stadiums into what seemed like meaningfully large small chunks and then like did something where like if you made a player run over it it would like put footsteps in the mud you know stuff like that but we were still doing it all on like geforce hardware or whatever but i remember that the engine had a full math library it had a full uh for c++ nerds stl like like stl is this this core library for c++ for someone at retro rewrote it and called it rstl uh had you know had that completely written had like full like collision and primitives and you could like collide a box with a box and get the whole collision volume it had like it had the underpinnings of like the the streaming system um that eventually got done in there but it did have the underpinnings of like tracking objects and when they went away you know like and marking them as loading it had like a, a ridiculous amount of code already written there and so when I got there, they had been sort of starting on this kind of unified world editor. They had this environment where essentially it was just like, think of it like a Windows taskbar and then menus for different editors and stuff. And each game could like register which editors they wanted to use or not. So it'd be like, start the particle editor, start the world editor, start, you know, whatever. All inside this sort of like taskbar type thing. And they still didn't have a world editor then. And I remembered when I got there, they started having all these meetings about like, well, how are we going to build out the scenes and the worlds? And what are we going to call things? We have actors and entities, but <laughs> that's not descriptive. And then someone, I, I remember one of the, 
dumbest things I'd ever heard. Someone was like, why don't we call entities that have positions ducks? We're like, ducks? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> ducks. I'm like, all right, great. So anyway, some people went off and wrote a world editor. I immediately started writing world editor two because world editor one was made more out of meetings than code. And so like, and then a lot of the design principles just weren't working. So world editor one was being used by, I believe, Raven Blade and football. And then I just wrote world editor two for Metroid. And that world editor two ended up being what we kept doing. So basically the rude sort of shell still remained there, but like I, I wrote world editor, uh, the late Andy O'Neill wrote the particle editor and all of the particle systems underneath it. And then um, a fellow named Kai Martin wrote the animation editor they're, they're, and then uh, got, and then also Alex Quinones, like a lot of people sort of contributed. But I think one thing that a lot of people don't really understand is retro actually had like years of code written before all of the hacks and slashes of the projects happened. So when you ask who's responsible, it's like dozens and dozens of people. Like a lot of their contributions have gone unheard, but honestly, it's one of the reasons we were able to race so fast once we did get dev kits is because we had this whole like engine underpinning already written. We didn't have the game engine, but we had the en the math, the primitives, all of that stuff it uh, kind of there enough to be able to write the game engine on top you know, of the world world editor rude retro utility development environment i think yeah, or something yeah. like that yeah and uh you know we were developed so it's a it's the the scripting system is a visual scripting system where you can place objects in the world and you can place like a trigger volume and have it send a message to an object to do something you know like you know act you know change a morph ball puzzle or rotate this object you know we have action controllers and stuff so it's a very visual scripting system so you can do all kinds of crazy stuff you know um, you know, like if you bar morph ball bomb into a bomb slot and then you have a, a, a trigger in there that's affected by bomb damage when they bomb again, then that could send a message to, you know, this door, this object over here to rotate up to let the player through or something. That's all done in the scripting engine in the editor. You know, it doesn't require any code. Um, I actually miss a lot of the engine we built to the, the retro engine we built for making the Metroid games. Uh, just the systems we built could, could be used to lever to build soul kinds of crazy, game, awesome games. Yeah. And you know, when I move into other game systems or engines, you know, I've worked on, you know, I worked on WoW and I worked on the Source Engine and stuff like that. And you know, some of it's missing and some of it's different. And you know, I'm like, I, I do. One thing I did miss is just the whole camera systems that Mark built. Like they were just so easy to use and and so incredibly powerful. So, so it, it would be safe to assume they'd still use the same engine, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they wouldn't move to Unreal or anything. They'd probably just uh, still, still use the yeah. same. Yeah, although it's probably getting a little dated now. Um, I mean, it's been two decades. Um, so the basis <laughs> is probably still there. So they probably have to rewrite the renderer at this point because the renderer was definitely specific to the GameCube hardware. So I imagine they'd have to plug in a new renderer, which they could, they could effectively grab something like Unreal or Unity and use its renderer and use the scripting system from Rood in that. Uh, they could even do do a hybrid like that. That's even possible. About, man, the scripting systems I built, they can, and the camera systems that Mark built, can be totally leveraged for a Donkey Kong game. Hmm. So I assume they just used all those systems to build Tropical Freeze, you know, because like those the, the their generic scripting and camera systems, they would have been perfect for building a game like that. And I